Good afternoon, collectors and friends. Welcome to our 70th episode of Trading Card Therapy. I sincerely appreciate each and every one of you for checking it out. I hope that you enjoy it and it brings you some good info about the hobby that we all love. In today's episode, I'm going to talk in particular about the National Sports Collectors Convention, which is set to take place next week at the IX Center in Cleveland, just outside of downtown. It's been in this location before, and generally every national that I've been to is always a good one. And for those that don't know me, I'm the doctor. My name is Leighton Sheldon. I'm the host of Trading Card Therapy, and I've been to every national sports collector's convention since Atlanta in 1999. And the only one that I missed, everyone else missed it as well, it was canceled in 2020 for COVID. So this is going to be my 25th, I sound like an old man uh, saying that out loud, but I enjoy each and every one of them. I know that I've come a long way in my journey. I'm sure many of you have come a long way in your journey. And we're here to talk about this year's edition of the National Sports Collectors Convention, some of my tips, tricks, and of course, I'd love to hear from you in the comments and the feedback to let me know if there's something that maybe I didn't cover today, but you think would be of benefit to someone that might be going out to Cleveland next week. So the first place I'm going to start is, you know, some of the things that you should either bring with you or have to make your life or your lives, depending if you're traveling with your family, your friends, a lot easier. So First place I like to start because I feel like, right, it's your feet on up. And listen, if you have heard some of these before and it's like a broken record, then at the very least, maybe you know that they're important because you've heard them from other different sources within the hobby, whether it be on YouTube or IG or Twitter, etc. you know they're important. So the first place I'm going to start is sneakers. To be fair, shoes, I guess flip-flops, but it might be tough to walk that big a space in flip-flops or sandals. I recommend something like an Ultra Boost from Adidas or the equivalent that has some nice, you know, spring in your step as you're walking on what is mainly hard concrete. So if you happen to be someone that works in the corporate area uh, at the National, so that particular space generally is um, really nice, you know, with depending on what um, company you're participating in, has some nice carpet. But outside of that, you know, other than maybe a few pads that will be behind a particular vendor's booth for them to step on or stand on while they're um, meeting and greeting people all throughout the convention, uh, you're generally going to be walking around on uh, just very hard concrete. And I remember years ago, I uh, ended up walking um, literally several dozen miles over the course of the week. Uh, and so just because of the breadth of the convention, the size, and depending on what you're trying to do there, especially if you're like someone who likes to buy and sell and flip and you know, move around, comfortable shoes or sneakers are going to be vital for you. Next up is uh, something that, of course, is very practical uh, for many of us this day and age. It's not just enough to really bring a regular phone charger because you would never need an outlet. So I, of course, am going to be bringing not only phone chargers, but also power banks. You know, the kind of thing that basically can charge your phone with a wire, you plug it into that. I'm not sure exactly how long it'll last, but you don't need an outlet for it. And at the National, where, of course, there's not going to be an infinite amount of free public outlets for you as the patron to use, I highly suggest to not only bring one, but potentially to bring two. So that way, you know that if you run out of juice on one of them, you could just quickly move on to the other one and then just charge them both in the room that night. Next up, big believer in bringing your own snacks. To me, healthier the better. But nonetheless, bringing your own snacks will not only save you a few dollars, but it's also going to save you a lot of convenience because, like I said, I've been at 25 of these in a row. This will be my 25th one in a row. And there's nothing more frustrating when you just want to go – Grab like a granola bar or a bag of peanuts because you know what? You're trying to hold yourself over until dinner or the next meal, and you're not trying to have Doritos or whatever the case is. And forget about the expense, but you know, some of the lines that I've seen at the national can be 15 minutes, 20 minutes, 30 minutes. 
And listen, let's be honest. We're all in some way, shape or form giving up something on top of spending a lot of money to be at this convention. I can tell you firsthand, I don't want to be there waiting for like, you know, an old hot dog that tastes like the bottom of my shoe or buying a granola bar that I could have just bought a box of before I came out. So I try to do some of that um, planning ahead. And for whatever it's worth, we're going to be taking a vehicle out there. We'll take a company truck. And, you know, I'll probably uh, send out like, you know, bananas and some other fruit that will, you know, likely last a week. So that way I don't actually have to go shopping at a local supermarket when we get to Cleveland. I feel like most of you who might be watching this are going to be a collector or potentially an investor of some kind. I wanted to share with you at least my firsthand view of what I think might help you. So, number one, even though the monetary systems come a long way and you can use Bitcoin and PayPal and Venmo and Zelle, and I'm sure I'm leaving out four others, not only is it the easiest to use cash, but you are likely to get your best deal. And I only know this because I myself have walked around some local conventions here in the New Jersey, New York, and Pennsylvania area over the last year or so, and I'm surprised everyone knows me. Happy to take a check most of the time, but they are not afraid to say when, you know what, I need cash for this. I'll give you a better deal. Okay. So I'm just letting you know as a collector, if you want to get the best deal, have the easiest way to pay for it and know that everyone will take your um, uh, equivalent wampum, if you will, everyone takes cash. Some people don't take PayPal. Others do. Some people don't take credit card and others do. The list goes on and on. I don't want to bore you with it. I need to catch my drift. Bring some cash to start would be my advice. Don't bring the whole second mortgage, but maybe have some access to an ATM machine or if your local bank is in Cleveland, save some of the fees, go directly to the bank, get your cash there. Whatever works best for you, there's my advice. Number two as a collector is do yourself a favor, especially if you're going there, trying to acquire more cards and you don't have an infinite budget like most of the rest of us, you're going to want to bring some additional cards with you that are maybe your doubles, your duplicates, your triplicates, cards you don't necessarily care about as much anymore, or you care a lot less about them if you've got this new card you're looking for, a grail, or whatever the case may be. And if you bring those cards with you for trade or potentially to sell them, do yourself a favor. Do the homework. Do the work at home. Do it up front. You're going to save yourself a lot of time, a lot of effort, a lot of agita. And who knows? What if the internet's not working? You know, if the spot you're standing at, the show, whatever the case is, you're running a juice in your phone because you didn't bring a power bank because you didn't watch my pre-national video on how to best prepare for the national. So the joking aside, just be prepared with the cards you bring, even if it's just three cards, because saving 20 minutes, you'd rather talk to your buddies you haven't seen in a year or, and I know people have talked about this, some people think the pricing can be um, expensive or high at the National, and it certainly can be, then just enjoy the museum. I know I do every year, even if I don't buy anything from my PC. I just love looking. I love meeting folks. I love saying hi to new people that I haven't met before, and kind of everything and anything in between. Next thing for collectors, if you can do this, it will help you plan out your week a little bit better. But I believe the National has announced Several different trade nights, three, I believe, in fact, that are done in affiliation with the National. They're going to take place on site at the IX Center, which is super cool. I believe that there's a Net54 dinner. There's a YouTube get-together. I'm sure there's going to be countless other get-togethers. And by the way, the Cleveland Guardians um, play uh, in Cleveland. I don't know if they're in town that week. I should have looked before today's episode. There's a lots to, excuse me, there's lots to do. There's a casino, wonderful restaurants along the water. Rock and Roll Hall of Fame, and just, I mean, countless other things to do, and of course, the National Sports Collectors Convention. The last thing that I had on my list for collectors to do, if you can, um, up front, is go to the National's website, I believe it's nsccshow.com, and check out the dealer map. Not only to see if some of your favorite dealers are going to be there, but also where they're going to be. So for example, shout out to my buddy Steve Hart. If you love Steve Hart, you love BBC Exchange, and you want to see what unopened they have on day one, and even though you don't necessarily think that you have the budget to buy it, you just enjoy looking at the materials such as I do, put on your list day one, 
There's three booths I want to see. Steve Hart. I want to drop off my cards for grading, so on and so forth. I think you get the picture. Create a map. I think you will be happier for it. Now, this is some advice I have for the dealers. And I'm really going to start with myself. So I know that we're following this. And we haven't always followed this in years past. But, you know, life is a journey. We have to learn along the way. And we have to grow. So number one thing is if you can get your cards priced before you go to the national. It's going to save everyone so much time and effort and energy and agita. I know when I have a card that's not priced, ugh, I'm like, I hang my head in shame. So do yourselves a favor, dealers. Be better. You'll probably do more business. It's my guess. Number two, something that we invested this year. So for electricity, I mean, they're charging you like some ungodly sum of like thousands of dollars to charge a light bulb. I don't know. So that's why we're having power banks for our phones. And we want to make sure we have lights. We haven't always been the best. Sometimes we forgot them. We didn't have enough so that people can see with good lighting the cards that either they might purchase from us here at Just Collect or to be fair, maybe they're going to be selling us cards and I want to see what they're selling me. Even if it's graded, I'd just like to know. So we have bought a bunch of lights that are all powered by battery. So yeah, it's a little bit inconvenient. Rather just plug them in, probably a little bit cheaper. Electricity was going to cost an arm and a leg. And I still like to go on vacation with my son later this summer. So, you know, there was that or electricity of the national. Joking aside, um, if you are a collector or a dealer, this goes along the lines of, you know, having the right lighting. I know some people bring like that little magnifying glass that has a little bit of light on that. That might do you well as um, uh, uh, also... Um, I just like to bring uh, a loop. I believe mine is 10x, you know, 10 times magnification. You don't want to have a loop that's too strong because if you do, you're going to pick up on wear on a card and you're going to end up being too critical of a card. And for that matter, don't buy a loop that's only 2 or 3x because then you're not going to see any flaws. You're going to be wondering why your cards are coming back in fives because there was very obvious wear there. You just didn't see it. Next up, an interesting one for dealers because I know that they are charging along the lines of electricity, a lot of money for internet. And so we are taking a different approach. We're going to make sure that we have hot spots available uh, for our phones and for our laptops. And the reason why it's important to us is because we want to have our booth be an easy place for people to either buy cards from us or sell cards to us. And if you have the internet ready, willing, and able to assist either other folks, patrons of your booth, or, of course, yourself when trying to figure out, can you get down to a certain price on a card um, or whatever the case may be, you're trying to make an offer on a card, just having that data, whether it be card ladder, VCP, 130 point, take your pick. There's lots of data out there, but if you don't have access to it, it's going to make our lives a lot more difficult at the National. The next thing that I wanted to discuss if I like a card when I get to the National and it's within the range of what I think is fair, I do not wait. I don't hesitate. I don't fret. I do my due diligence, my research, and then I execute. And the reason being is because I've just found all too often I am not getting back to where I marked down, you know, booth number 1421. It was this card. It was a Mantle 68 and an 8. It was a nice card, blah, blah. If I think I can execute right then, I try to take it down and acquire the card and buy it. But if I don't, I have a two-tiered approach. I take a picture of the card with my phone, and I take out my little steno pad, and I write down not only the day, I write down the time, and I have everything in chronological order so I can match up my phone. And only in recent years have I found this effective method works so well that I'm recommending it to you because the National, if you went to last year in Chicago, it was out of control. It was very big. It's hard to keep track of, you know, your kids, your loved ones, your friends. But joking aside, you're not going to find every card again. So if you can't execute on the spot, which is my number one thing to recommend, just take a note down, not just the photo. If you don't want to write down where the booth is, take a second photo, look up, take a photo there. Hopefully that will get it for you. For those that have prices on their cards, not everyone is going to be negotiable. 
And even at my booth, there's some cards I will negotiate on, others I won't. You don't ask, you'll never know. So if you see a card for 300 and you're like, you know, I only have 280 left. I just don't know if this fellow is going to give me a discount. All you can do is ask. The worst that you're going to be, the worst that's going to happen is you'll be turned down. If you're turned down, don't worry. You can cry on my shoulder. It's going to be okay. Treat others the way that you would like to be treated. And you'll have a better chance of maybe saving that 20 bucks in that card. All right. Next up is, and this is not something for me, but I know a lot of folks, collectors. Uh, Crosby, my son, is nine. If he ever gets to go to a national next couple of years, I'm sure this will be something that we focus on together. But there is a lot of freebies and promos, promo type items that are given away at the national, anywhere from like the Ludex Lounge to the, you know, sneak pre preview on the first day of the national to the card manufacturers like Tops and Upper Deck. And I know there's other promotions like the David Adams might run. Steve Hart might have daily specials. So just keep your eyes and ears open for that. Next up is grading. If you didn't know, now you do. There's very few conventions on the sports card circuit where you can grade cards on site. And I know PSA is offering those services. My only advice is do the research early, meaning know what cards you want to submit, know the services. And if you can, if you can stomach waiting on the line and getting there early, get in line early, get done with your business, because I believe it's only going to get busier as the show goes on. Next up, some of your favorite hobby influencers will be at the National. So whether it be you're a fan of, or to be fair, whether it be you hate any of the influencers and you'd like to give them a piece of your mind, the best place to do that is at the National Sports Collectors Convention. I would say most of, if not all of them, will be there at some point. Check them out. Say hi. I'm sure they'd love to hear from you. It doesn't only apply to dealers, but I think this is something that collectors can do as well. You can work on building relationships with fellow collectors, with fellow dealers, with fellow auction house owners, or just you know employees of auction houses. You can meet folks that work at card companies. There's artists sometimes that are working literally their own booth. The point is stop and smell the roses there. It's not just about the cards or the stuff. It's about the human interaction. And let's be honest. With COVID taking away the 2020 National and just in recent time, you know, technology has taken over our lives more than ever before, whether it be you're breaking seven days a week, you're on whatnot, you're bidding on eBay seven days a week, or, you know, bidding in auctions, whatever the case may be, take advantage of saying hi and building. Just start with one or two relationships. It'll go a long way to having an enjoyable hobby experience. All right, the last things I wanted to close with, and I guess they go hand in hand, but I would say it like this. Respect the game and have good etiquette. So, for example, if you are going online for food and you can spare an extra minute and you see someone struggling like a mom with their son, maybe let them go in front of you. If you are a dealer and you know it's hard for you to leave the booth, maybe offer to buy one of your customers' lunches if they'll go and grab you a lunch. If you go up to someone's booth and even though you're super excited about a card, but you see that their three employees are engaged in discussions with other folks, your time isn't any more important than anyone else's there. Be respectful. If you are able to get a freebie or a promo and it's not necessarily something that fits in your PC, there might be some people that are shut out at the National because they didn't know about it, they were too late, limited supplies. Maybe share one with a neighbor. Make sure you try to get some smiles at the National because it's well worth it. I know that I'll be smiling the entire week and I try to bring as many smiles to kids' faces as possible. And that is probably the best part of the convention is the interaction and getting to see, I think I made a deal with a young collector last year for a Gretzky rookie, getting to see, 
I was that version. I was that person at some point. And if we can see the beauty in all of that, our hobby is going to be around for a long, long time to come. I hope you enjoyed today's content and that some of these tips might prove useful for you. If there's anything else you can think of, I'd love if you could share that in the chat so that someone else can get some value from this video as well. Please stop by and meet me at the Just Collect booth. I'll be there all week, set up to next, set up next to Darren Ravel's booth. And Steve Hart has a booth in the corporate section as well as on the floor where he'll be selling some singles. He'll be next to my booth as well. Until next time, folks, thanks for tuning in.